If you look almost anywhere in the 2010s, the promises of powered exoskeletons are inescapable. From movies like Edge of Tomorrow, Iron Man, Elysium, to video games like Call of Duty and Fallout, the world of fiction just couldn't get enough. But it wasn't just works of fiction either. This technology was supposed to be the next big thing in industry, construction, mobility, and defense. Growing up with an interest in engineering, I remember watching the hype around this technology unfold. And come on, these exosuits are awesome. Strap yourself into one of these and you can find yourself with superhuman strength and agility. While real exoskeletons differ greatly from those on the silver screen, their rise and fall in popularity can serve as a cautionary tale for when ambitious technology meets an underwhelming reality. Hey everyone and welcome back to Engineomics, my channel that looks at the intersection of engineering and economics. Today we're going to be looking at the weird craze of these futuristic powered exoskeletons and why they never really came to be. As always, if you enjoy this kind of content and want more, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to Engineomics for more. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, promises of enhancing human ability have dominated the imaginations of inventors, artists, engineers, and scientists. Here is Nicholas Yagen's 1890 patent for powered mobile machines consisting primarily of a skeleton-like framework worn by a person and a power supply that supplies at least part of the activation energy for limb movement. So in layman's terms, this is the first powered exoskeleton, or the design at least. This design was supposed to use compressed air sacs to power mobility in a way that was super ahead of its time. In 1917, Leslie C. Kelly patented the pedometer, which claimed to accomplish similar functions with more details this time. Ultimately, these designs gave inspiration for the exoskeletons we think of today, and although there were more attempts at actual prototypes in the 20th century, none exactly took off until the 21st century, where modern technology made designs slightly more feasible. Sure, compressed gas is a great source of power if you live in a fictional steampunk dystopia, but a lithium-ion battery could allow for a far higher energy density. Which brings me to the first major hurdle of why widespread use of exoskeletons hasn't exactly happened thus far. Energy density. In addition to providing power for superhuman strength, any sort of exoskeleton needs to account for the weight and size of its power source, which can often be the largest part and for some reason is rarely shown in concept renders. But taking this into account, the amount of power is immense considering the need for multiple hours of battery life and can straight up be infeasible. Many powered exoskeleton efforts I researched were reluctant to include such a statistic. The Lockheed Martin Onyx, for example, lacks any sort of the use time statistics in an otherwise pretty technical demo. The best comparison in terms of power is that of a similarly complex robot such as Spot, the now famous Boston Dynamics robot, which has an average runtime of 90 minutes. This is understandable for a robot which can swap battery packs without wasting time, but force a soldier or worker to walk over to a power station, swap out batteries every hour and a half, and things get pretty tedious. The second reason why superhuman exoskeletons flopped for the most part is the technological precision needed to make these effective. The human body, for as simple as it seems, especially when completing everyday tasks, is actually extremely complicated, precise, and most importantly, fragile. Creating a suit capable of picking up on the slightest rotation of a forearm during a throw, or a backwards lean during a squat, requires extremely specific sensors and actuators. This all takes a lot of power and computational ability that is frankly out of reach with current technology. It's just been in the past couple of years that we've created bipedal robots capable of self-balancing, running, and jumping. That said, add a human element on top of that, and the equation complicates exponentially. These two factors of power consumption and lack of precision ultimately have led the US military to canceling its exoskeleton development program, previously dubbed TALOS. TALOS stands for the Tactical Assault Light Operator Suit, which is a pretty cool name by the way. But this followed a long stretch of research which ultimately determined in 2019 that any sort of suit would be bulky, weak, expensive, and not that easily scalable. Which then leads to the third and final reason why exoskeleton adoption is relatively impractical. A single exoskeleton by itself is not an effective weapon or tool. For military applications, an entire squadron needs to be outfitted to have any noticeable effect in combat. The marginal value of, say, a tried and true unmanned aerial vehicle or tank is much higher than an exoskeleton or mech suit. The same goes for a manufacturing environment. While the alien power loader might be more helpful in an extraterrestrial invasion, a simple forklift can do the same job safer and more reliably. Sometimes the most boring solution is often the best. That isn't to say that exoskeletons don't have their use. I do want to highlight a variant that, like Delta, should not be underestimated. Various companies are pursuing exoskeletons that assist with rehabilitation and prosthetics for individuals who are incapable of walking normally. 
This scenario makes much more sense as the requirements aren't superhuman and the user base is already proven. Yes, powered wheelchairs exist, but the world around us is designed for bipedal humans. And if this video of a disabled man proposing to his girlfriend with the help of an exoskeleton doesn't prove their need and make you tear up on the side, I don't know what will. But in the meantime, if you see any of those BS clickbait articles or YouTube videos slyly claiming that we'll all be Iron Man within the next decade, take that with a grain of salt. Like my video on 3D printed houses, the media tends to latch onto early prototypes and concepts of exciting new technology trends and then claim them to be true. This starts a vicious cycle of the game of telephone. Sure, there might have been inklings of the truth in the first article, but after a decade of articles based off of videos, based off of articles, based off of other videos, the waters have become muddied and you get things like this which claim that the Chinese military have developed superhuman exoskeletons when in actuality these are nothing more than plastic braces with a cool design. Sure, they may stabilize the legs under heavier loads, but regardless, this claim is laughable. So, what can you take away from all of this then? Well, I think this goes beyond just don't believe everything you see on the internet. Often the envisioned futures of the past vary drastically from those that we see today. In his video series on the realities of past futures, YouTube channel Knowledge Hub laments the past promises of flying cars, holograms, and those weird early 2000s phone predictions. For one reason or another, these never saw the light of day, and exoskeletons may be the next to join them. Sure, this technology hopefully will find other purposes in rehabilitation, but for the time being, I doubt we'll see the light of day where we can all lift cars and leap over buildings. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please help me out by hitting the like button. You all have been super supportive so far, and I love seeing how far the Engenomics community has come. I've got a lot more in store for you, so definitely hit subscribe for more content in the future. I'm Hank from Engenomics, and I'll catch you later. Bye.